Um, we have as our special guest, uh, we have G.W. Chu, also AKA known as Chef Chu. He is the owner of the Veg Hub, which is uh, a restaurant in Oakland. He um, has um, created an alternative to meat. It's called Better Chew, and that's in Whole Foods. Um, so he's been doing a lot. And like we say, he's the grandmaster. <laughs> For those of you who have tasted my husband's, um, uh, um, what do you call it? Kentucky Fried. Kentucky Fried. <laughs> Kentucky what fried. Do you call it? Okay, sorry. Kentucky Fried Tofu. Um, Again, this um, he has been the inspiration years ago to my husband even wanting to try to master some type of tofu chicken dish. And so we are so excited to have Chef Shu with us today. So welcome. Happy Sabbath. We are so excited. I was trying to think this morning. We first met you. It was in Maryland. And I know Ivor was a guest speaker at a church, but I just don't know the year. I think the kids were little. I know they were little. Yeah, my, excuse remember. me. Uh, it, was, it was actually my uncle's church. Is that your uncle's church? Okay, yes. Exactly. I, it, um, I think it was, uh, I'm hearing feedback in my, my phone. I'm not sure. You're not winning. Uh, we don't hear feedback yeah, here, we don't hear so you're feedback. good. You sound good for us. Okay. Yeah, I'm hearing um, a playback, so I'm not sure what's happening. Okay. Um, yeah, but I first met you guys, uh, it was at my uncle's church, uh, my uncle, Pastor King, Tyrone King, and uh, Prince Frederick Maryland, where I grew up at. So that yes. was like literally like 13 years ago, maybe, I don't know. 13 years <laughs> ago? Wow. Oh, wow. I didn't know it was that long, but yeah. Yeah. And I first met you guys, I think it was at maybe one of the GYCs or ASIs, like probably 20 years ago, I think in Sacramento, wow. 2001. Okay. Wow. Well, yeah, that's when I first remember meeting you guys. Yeah, I mean, like I said, you're known as Chef Chu. Um, everybody in, in the Bay Area knows, I mean, that it, the Adventists know, and outside of Adventism is, you know, familiar with your restaurant in Oakland. So tell us a little bit about your journey on how you um, were able to do this ministry, which is, I mean, you're just passionate about it, but also just teaching people how they can eat healthy and it still tastes good because your slogan is you will always give them something to chew on is that what you say that you say something like that don't you so, yeah yeah I, okay i might have messed it up a little bit like i and that's all good like i always say <laughs> you say it going to give you something to chew on yeah, okay. <laughs> okay yes yeah so how did you get to this point you know it started when i was a kid um i always start my story um, I was actually a country boy. I grew up in uh, Southern Maryland, um, a little country town where you guys came and spoke at. Um, most of my family members, uh, you know, I ate everything from, I mean, we ate squirrels. I mean, you know, talking about fried wow. chicken ribs, pork chops, ham. I always tease everybody. My father always told me, he said, I missed, I missed possum by like 10 years. Wow. <laughs> so, wow. so, you know, I thank God I didn't have to eat no possum, man. Um, you know, but again, growing up in a, in a family that was a very meat centric family, um, my father literally uh, was a sharecropper growing up. So literally, I was age of five, six years old. I still remember him sharecropping, um, you know, but just that lifestyle of, you know, heavy meat eating, um, you know, saw a lot of that, you know, so I kind of got that was kind of interesting because my mother's side of the family was seven day Venice. Mm. And uh, so, you know, I, literally when I was in third grade, I started going to church with my uncle and my aunt. And so on Sabbath, I started having, you know, your grillers and your ready burgers and mm -hmm. your wham and all these vegan, well, mostly vegetarian at the time, vegetarian products. And it was just like, like, what in the world is this? I thought it tasted like dog food when I first had it. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know. Don't tell the oh, man. people that. So, said that. <laughs> oh, wow. Nobody tell them. <laughs> hey. So, yeah. So growing up and, uh, you know, eating a lot of the, the veggie meats you know, from the church and my family actually made it taste pretty good, to be honest. Um, you know, that got me really excited. So I got exposed to vegetarianism in my childhood. Mm -hmm. um, at the same time, you know, again, growing up eating fried chicken and everything, you kind of want to experience some of those things. Um, so literally when I was 18 years old, um, i actually became a vegan. I was in college at Howard University, uh, made this super transition, uh, became a vegan. Uh, let go of my last, had my last piece of fried chicken, man. I had a party, like had a, literally had a <laughs> fried chicken party. <laughs> so, a fried yeah. chicken party, did, wow. did you say, uh, how, did you say Howard? <laughs> yeah, at Howard, I was at Howard in DC. I was at Howard. 
Yeah. And you had a fried and, uh, chicken party by yourself? By myself, man. I made, I had the, I don't know if you heard this, something called Glory Greens. It was these greens in a can called Glory Greens. I had bought a can of Glory Greens, got me some chicken, got like some uh, wings. I, mean, I had the special batter that my mother taught me how to make. Had like 10 pieces, man. Tore that stuff up. And uh, and literally, that was my last piece of fried chicken. Wow. And, uh, you know, but from there again, I, I was, you know, I got exposed to vegetarianism from my hey, family. Real quick, was that, yeah. was that meal pre-planned? Like, were you like, I'm not eating chicken anymore, so this is my last, you know, yes. my... That okay, was that was, your... that was my going away ceremony, man. It was like the, the, the last supper, man. <laughs> I mean, yeah, it was it was a heartfelt uh, experience, man. I got you. I, it was, you know, yeah. Um, at the same time, it's interesting, before I keep going, like my family members, so my, a lot of my family members on my father's side of the family, I started having, and some on my mother's side, started having some really lifestyle diseases, some really heavy core lifestyle diseases. Um, mm. You know, everything from diabetes, heart disease, cancers. Um, and some of them actually died in their 50s, early 50s. Um, and so a lot of that started happening in my family um, just as a result of our lifestyle habits. Um, so again, I went vegan 2001. Wow. Um, not a lot of stuff on the market. So I'm eating, you know, spaghetti and you know, a lot of, you know, just, I don't know all the stuff I used to eat, but it wasn't a whole lot of like, a lot, lot of processed stuff, but it wasn't really the healthiest, but it was at least a start. Mm -hmm. um, I started getting exciting about, you know, just experimenting with my own foods. Um, I eventually uh, started canvassing, um, you know, remember Cole Porter, you know, old school Cole Porter, you don't hear about Cole Porter as much as we used to. Mm -hmm. um, but I started Cole Portering uh, with, a team of, with a team of young men. And uh, obviously we had to eat. And so, you know, I, I became the, like the cook uh, for the team um, and got super passionate about this cooking and creating did, recipes and started a, creating my own products. Were you a cook prior to this? Meaning like, did you enjoy cooking before? Did you cook as a younger kid or like? Yeah, yeah, okay. oh man. So like my, my mom and dad and my uncles and aunts, I mean, we, we love to eat, man. Love to cook good food. Um, I'm talking about, you know, I mean, again, my father had his special recipes. Um, so a lot of the inspiration of cooking and creativity uh, came from them. I always tell people, I say, listen, like, you know, my family, like one of my aunts, she cooked like chitlins and stuff, right? So I always said, look, if you can make chitlins taste good, you can make vegetarian <laughs> vegan food taste good. I mean, that's the most horrible smelling, nastiest the, stuff in the planet. The so, most, you know. The most. <laughs> I've never even, I've never. <laughs> it, it, it attacks your nose, man. Oh, man. You like got a lace with a, like, Go it's like a knife. Yeah. Come on. <laughs> Yeah. So like literally, man, you know, like I remember back in the days with hot sauce over it, man. And but again, that took a lot of creativity. I think he was talking about Eric Walsh and said that they talked about slave food. Mm -hmm. But to make slave food taste good takes a lot of creativity. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so mm -hmm. I, I look at the inspiration of creativity that a lot of the foods that we ate, even though it wasn't the healthiest, you know, it, it really inspired me to just be creative and think outside the box. You know, so that came from my family. For sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Your mom's had the, the best potato salad. You know, she had a macaroni and cheese and all that type of stuff. So, you know, yeah, yeah. That 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 reminds me um, when my mom, like my mom is like, she's an amazing cook. And when yeah. she became vegetarian, when she started being right. vegetarian for, for me, I was so like, because I became Adventist first, my brother and I. And um, yeah. You know, we were doing the, the soy milk that was like horrendous tasting and all that stuff. And then was it the powder soy milk. <laughs> I don't remember what it was. All I knew. And at the time, I didn't care because I had just given up milk. I didn't know there was such a thing as soy milk. Right, right, right. So when I found it, I didn't care how it tasted. I was just like, praise the Lord. And oh, man. I had much worse soy milk than that. Because I remember when I was like 10 years old and my mom just said, we're not drinking milk anymore. And she brought, I think it was called Eden Soy. It was the first Yeah, I remember Eden Soy, absolutely. And it was like the nastiest mm -hmm. soy milk. And oh, was like, wow. What is that? And so, yeah, you were actually born so, yeah. by the time yeah. you started doing that. So when my mom started cooking and she would just, she <clears> would just uh, take all the Jamaican dishes that we would make and just substitute it with, you know, the veggie meat and, oh, man. Yeah. All about seasoning. It was, it's all about seasoning. 
That's it, man. That's it. Veganizing, so you, man. So you started yeah. cooking for the the call porters or the canvassers. Uh, yeah, yeah. And then what happened? <clears throat> Yeah, so I started cooking, and so I started my first uh, product. It was called Crunchy Bunchy Granola. Um, so what we did as canvassers, we actually would go door to door, um, sell books. But at the end of our clothes, we would be like, "Yo, we also sell, you know, we got granola and bread." So we had our Crunchy Bunchy Granola. I used to say, "We don't box, but we got a granola that will knock you out." And so we would close <laughs> the sale with our food products, and so people would buy it. You know, so we became like you know, booksellers as well as these food sellers. And, you know, I was selling food products and, and um, that really began the, the journey of like, like creating products. Mm -hmm. um, and so we was making granolas and like, so literally at that point I was doing granolas and I started in 2004 getting excited about a plant-based protein. Um, you know, for me, it was just, I was just doing it more as a hobby, <clears throat> not really trying to bring a product to market. And I had my first, uh, my honey barbecue, uh, the, again, to keep talking about KFC Kentucky Fried, I created my first uh, honey barbecue chicken wing, man. <clears throat> wow. And that was, uh, yeah, 2004, man. I was, you know, just making that. I literally took an oat burger at the time, and I, you know, you know, oat burgers, you know, it's like, it looked like cookies sometimes, but I took the cookie <laughs> oat burger look like, and uh, I turned it into a little chicken leg. And uh, I almost, like, when I did it, I, like, literally just formed it into a chicken leg, like, just out of the fun of it. And when I did that, my mind is, like, raced. It was, like, Voila, you know, like, okay, this is like, I, we can do something here. Mm -hmm. and, and what's so what's so powerful is that even going back before, I, I didn't even hit the, hit the point. A lot of inspiration, I, I can't just say it was just more of this journey. Um, you know, our, our faith, our message of Seven at Venice, when you really read our writings, uh, obviously the health message, you know, a lot of, you know, Ellen White, she spoke a lot about the health message, but she also spoke about food manufacturing. Mm -hmm. um, she had a, a quote that said that the Holy Spirit would teach uh, young and old, how to make foods without the use of flesh meats. Mm. Um, and she had a lot of visions, you know, and just, you know, like, remember one of the, our, our pioneers in our church, uh, John Harvey Kellogg, um, there's a lot of counsels that was written to him because um, he obviously invented, you know, cornflakes, the cereal. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, and so, and that that was kind of like the tech, tech, believe it or not, it was a booming, you know, discovery. And it was in Battle Creek, Michigan, you know, there was hundreds of like startups um, that were literally like creating cereals mm. um, and a lot of them really kind of went after it for the money sake of it just the financial opportunity whereas john harvey kellogg she was counseling him to really look at it from a standpoint of you know really being a blessing for humanity um, and being able to provide foods that can help people to just have longevity um, at the time there was a lot of disease um, so having a, a cereal that was dry that could be held on the shelf uh, without spoiling and things like that. That was a powerful discovery, obviously. And so yeah. a lot of the counsels that she, Ellen White wrote, you know, she wrote about food manufacturing. I was reading those things at the same time. Um, and I believe when it said that the Holy Spirit would teach us how to make recipes, you know, without the use of flesh meats and, you know, God would be your instructor. And, you know, the Bible talks about, you know, the Holy Spirit will teach you all things to bring all things to remembrance. At the, while I'm like literally developing the crunchy bunch of granola, I'm thinking about making this chicken. I'm reading about, you know, all of those councils and reading the scriptures and I'm, you know, I'm 23 years old, 22 years old. I'm just excited about, you know, ministry and life. And I believe, you know, God's word is true. And, um, you know, the Holy Spirit, I can say, man, he, he just became my teacher. Um, and this, you know, went into the, I would say the lab and started really getting focused on making this, this like amazing plant-based protein. Um, after about two or three years, I mean, literally I went through multiple types of grains, beans, I mean, hundreds and hundreds of experiments. Mm. Um, I would, I'd be at my mom's house. I mean, pretty much a step all night and the blender would be going just, <laughs> you know, I'm burning up pots and, uh, and, uh, literally man, uh, it'd be like one o'clock in the morning. I'd be like, mom, wake up, wake up, you know, try this, try this, uh, this sausage, you know, what do you think about this? You know, and she opened up her mouth like a little bird, man. I'd be like, taste it. <laughs> so, and, uh, you know, and I tell you, I mean, over about three or four years into it, you know, I had discovered some processes that really opened up the key uh, for me to really learn how to like master this protein, like making plant based proteins. Mm. Um, and this really started going deeper and deeper into this the production perspective. So, you know, not only again, we have a recipe, but, you know, but the key is like, how do you actually make this stuff on a large scale? You know, that's kind of yeah. like, you know, you can make it make it at home, but. You know, you know, I always talk about the person that has this great cookie recipe, but, you know, I, well, I'm going to get it on a, in Walmart. But, you know, to get it in Walmart, you know, it's not that easy, right? So mm -hmm. we, I had to learn a lot about the manufacturing business. Um, so early on, I started working in commercial kitchens. 
uh, getting exposed to like large equipment, you know, making products at scale. Mm -hmm. And eventually um, with all of this, <clears throat> I started in 2008. We started our first vegan restaurant in 2008. Um, it was a me and my, myself and a group of group of a group of guys, myself, same corporate team. Called, it was, we had a restaurant called Eating to Live, uh, and I did it in my hometown where I grew up at, that little country town, you know, meat and potato town. They thought I was crazy. I had the first, I had the first vegan restaurant in Calvert County, Maryland, probably the first and the last. <laughs> wow! Wow! Oh man! So yeah, so I, that's kind of so that you know again, just all the development years. And I always like to say when I was developing the plant-based proteins, again, come being myself, being an avid meat eater, I like to say we, I discovered, you know, through God's power, the, the secrets of why we love meat so much. Mm -hmm. And I always say that it's, it's the texture, it's the taste, and it's the appearance. Mm -hmm. If you can mimic the texture, the taste, and the appearance, um, obviously something that people are familiar with. Um, you know, that goes a long ways. And I would always kind of create all these crazy slogans to make it fun. So I say, you know, it looks like chicken, tastes like chicken, but guess what? It ain't chicken. It's crispy on the outside and it's white in the middle. Oh, it's delicious. And so, you know, it's making up slogans and, and just having fun singing songs. You know, all of that became a part of the, this, the whole concept of, you know, make a great product, you know, put the God's love into it you know, get excited and passionate about it. Mm -hmm. And then people really want to try it and want to taste it. And that begins the process of, you know, being able to bring change. And so, you know, all of that, man, I mean, it's a lot that goes into that story. But for me, I say this, um, when I think about creating healthy food products, it's a life or death issue. Mm. Yeah. Um, you know, again, having family members um, that die, you know, in their early 50s, um, you know, with lifestyle diseases that can be prevented. Um, and not knowing a better way. Um, that, for me, it, I take it very personally. I mean, I lost my father um, a few, about five years ago, four or five years ago, a life, lifestyle diseases as well. Um, and, it's, and especially in, in black and brown communities where we have the highest rates of disease, um, the highest rates of cancers, um, you know, this is so important um, in, in communities of color especially. So, so, you know, for me, again, I look at what we're doing, you know, you know, Again, this whole recipes and foods, it's a life or death issue. And, um, you know, God says, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health. And I believe that food is a weapon uh, either for destruction against someone's health and their mental state, or it can be a, a weapon to actually bring health, you know, protection against disease mm -hmm. and et cetera. So um, it's a very serious thing. And I believe God has called us, you know, to, to be, a, be leaders in this, in, in this industry, especially, you know, when we look at plant-based, you know, what's happening in the plant-based industry at this point. So, so that's yeah. kind of how I got started, man. And, uh, you know, I, I definitely a lot more to talk about when the rest the restaurant and kind of that, that, that growth, but yeah. that's kind of how I got started, you know, right. when I became a vegan and so forth. I wanted to say, yeah. going back to a point that you made, because I heard another plant-based advocate say this um, a few weeks ago, that uh, people think like, oh, I can never give up uh, chicken or meat. And, you know, he was saying like, you're not really chasing the flesh. Like you're really chasing the way it's seasoned. You're chasing the rosemary and the way that, you know, people season chicken. Because like you wouldn't want just a raw or just even a yes. cooked unseasoned piece of meat like mm -hmm. it's not good but it's mm -hmm. all about like when you said the texture and the seasoning people are saying it's all about that and um absolutely mm -hmm. like you know like you say i mean just think about it you know one of my good friends uh you know adventist doctor dr milton mills you know he has a a, a really amazing talk called uh, i think it's um the psychology of disgust and, and the point that he brings out is like when you think about meat in order to make meat taste good you season it with vegetables you think about it <laughs> Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, you put, you know, onions and peppers and, you know, paprika and all these different spices that come from vegetable ingredients, number one. Um, and at the same time, you know, you think about fruits and vegetables, you know, it's cut in nice, regular shapes. You know, meat, when you look at it, it's in its natural state, looks disgusting. You know, it's, I mean, if, if you don't cook it and brown it and chop it up and put red color in it, all of that, that's what makes meat, you know, but it's in essence, it's, it's copying you know, plant-based foods, which we, which we normally in this, out of this, our innate, how God created us, we naturally say a vegetable or, a, you know, a tomato or a grape or a strawberry looks good to eat. If you look at meat, your body doesn't say that. Your body says, I'm not going to eat that, but you have to cut it up and flavor it with vegetables and all mm -hmm. these different things in order for it to become a health, something that you want to eat and one that's wow. one stuff that you want to be desired. So our, 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 di our psychology and how God created us um, we're not designed to eat meat. Um, that's just not how God created us. 
Um, and so I believe that it's just a matter of getting people to recognize that, you know, we're over, overboards, you know, the way God created us. And again, it can be done in a way that's, you know, delicious. But again, habits are hard to break. You know, I mean, shoot, if I'm, if I'm eating, I mean, I eat fried chicken about five, six days a week sometimes. Um, I mean, that's, that's just how I grew up. And just that reality is, is not easy. And I always say when you teach people to make that change, I, when I first started teaching health, I was like, man, you know, you can't eat this. And it's, you know, it's, it's you know, you know, you know, really kind of make it a, uh, a salvation, you know, focus model or issue. Mm-hmm. And, and I felt like people, you know, I was trying to scare them to want to change. And that's, I found out that's not the way that you can't, people are not going to change but through fear. You know, right. you, you can't be like, you know, you know, it's wrong and God says it's wrong. And, that, you know, nah, that's, that's not the way you have to teach the health message and teach, you know, longevity. Yeah. You know, it's, we do it because, number one, our bodies are similar to the Holy Spirit. Um, and at the same time, who doesn't want something better? You know, who doesn't want to, you know, be able to have longevity and health and, and be able to have, you know, this feel good, you know? And so um, I, I think the way that we teach it cannot be from a condemn, con- con- condemnatory perspective, but it has right. to be in a way to uplift and encourage uh, people to want to change. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think that's something that, you know, I found to be very, very important uh, as you, especially when you realize that communities who have been eating this way for, you know, for years, you know, for centuries at this point, it's not going to be easy. And then, and then at the same time, some places don't have access uh, to the things you're advocating. Mm-hmm. Um, and so there's a lot involved when it comes to change. Um, and there's a lot of layers that has to be looked at when you think about these things. So you um, enjoyed cooking as a young person. You started cooking for your friends. You started a business even when you were call portering by selling the granola and those types of things. And then you opened a restaurant for a while in Maryland. And so, and that one, how long did that restaurant, how long was that open? Yeah, that, man, that restaurant, 2008, um, I think we lasted about a year. I didn't know what, we didn't know what we were doing. Okay. Um, we, <laughs> I tell you, I got some horror stories of entrepreneur, my entrepreneur experiences. Um, mm. We literally we all put, up, put out, <laughs> <It's okay. laughs> I tell you, the good news was that we, you know, I, we got, got to put our plant-based products in the, you know, people to get people to start tasting it and got a lot of good feedback from the community. Um, but it lasted about a year. Mm-hmm. But I got a lot of experience from that restaurant. Um, and, but at the time, honestly, 2008, going into a meat potato town with this way premature. Uh, this, the timing was not right, you know, right. but yeah, you know, be, God still had a plan. Yeah, that if that would makes be sense. a challenge. But you, did, <laughs> but you didn't give up. That yeah. was 2008, ended around 2009, but you didn't give up. So, I mean, it's, you're obviously very passionate about yeah. this. I was going to say it's amazing to see just how much this industry has taken off where mm. you know you can go into any store now um and find vegetarian uh options for you know burgers and all that kind of stuff like it's yes it's and for yeah. me as a gluten freer mm-hmm. <laughs> you yeah. find barely good substitutes that are even gluten free yeah. and i'm just like oh in heaven yeah <laughs> yeah i mean it's i mean like you said i mean from 2001 when I first started, it was already anything. 2008, it was starting to kind of really be, you know, it was starting to kind of get more and more. I mean, soy milk at, at that point was kind of more of a mainstay in milk got industry. Better. Yeah, but 2016, 17, I mean, 18 and beyond and impossible really kind of just went off. Um, I mean, it's just the industry in and of itself. It's just, it's just growing leaps and bounds and the innovation. I mean, and it's, I mean, I, I meet so many people, you know, colleagues now in the industry that's, you know, people that are developing products. Um, I mean, all types. I mean, from, the, you know, dairy to desserts to meat products. I mean, it's just, it's countless now what you can find. Um, and then now the main the main companies, the, the billion dollar corporations are now like this is this, you know, we're, we're plant plant based is a part of their, their their business model. You know, they have whole teams that are dedicated to like creating plant based products in these major companies now. Um, so this is this. The future is here. And uh, what's so powerful is that, you know, again, as a church, mm-hmm. we were told that this was, yep. this was, I always say that's, it was the vegan prophecy. You know, Ellen White said, listen, 120 years ago, you know, meat is not going to be, you know, something that we're going to want to, that we can ha- actually eat, you know, because of disease. Um, mm-hmm. She didn't talk about the environment. As, as she might have, I, don't, I can't remember, but obviously the environment is saying, hey, you know, meat is unsustainable. <laughs> I mean, we right. keep eating meat with all the, the outputs that happen because of, you know, animal factory farming 
you know, with all the water usage, the, the mm -hmm. runoff into the oceans, I mean, it's from all the fertilizers, because most of the soybeans in this country or around the world is not being used to make tofu or soy milk. It's actually being used to feed cattle, mm -hmm. um, which is ge genetically modified soybeans. Yeah, I've heard that. Um, yeah, so, you know, people say, well, you know, you know, soybeans, a lot of the soybeans in the industry is made, it's not as GMO soybeans, which is primarily being used to feed cattle. Mm -hmm. So a lot of the meat, people say, well, I don't want to eat soy. But I'm like, well, if you eat meat, you kind of eat soy because the cattle, their protein comes from soy and it's mm -hmm. GMO soy. Um, so, you know, people say, well, I don't want to eat, you know, so the argument is it's not as solid as people think it is. So, yeah, you know, there's a lot of information, I think, that has to be clarified. Um, yeah. But it's, 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 we're here, and I don't think it's going nowhere anytime soon. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So you didn't give up um, because you now own a restaurant that's going very well. Can you tell us how you, from the timing of that restaurant closing and the journey you kind of went through to get to where you are today? Yeah. So it's interesting. I got After that restaurant closed, I moved to Arkansas. This is about 2011. Uh, my wife is actually uh, there working at a lifestyle clinic called Wellness Secrets. Okay. Um, and we got married. I actually had, had a little cafe, so I kind of went there and helped her in the cafe. I got a call to be a, a pastor in Arkansas. So I was actually a lay pastor mm. uh, in Arkansas. Mm. Um, this was 2011. 2012, uh, ended up, you know, uh, starting a, a vegan restaurant in Arkansas. So I went from another country town to yeah. another country town yeah. um, yeah, in you Fayetteville, it in Arkansas. <laughs> I know, um, but I was in Fayetteville, like a mile from the University of Arkansas. Okay. And uh, so this restaurant, I learned a lot more about the business side of it, you know, d definitely a little bit more strategic and financial side of it. So that went a lot better. But we, this restaurant really became the foundation on perfecting how to use the proteins that I had created. Mm -hmm. um, so the Philly cheese steaks, you know, we had the, the, the barbecue chicken wings and the chicken melt sandwiches. All of those recipes really started centralizing and really, uh, coming together. But what was so powerful, I was also a pastor and I had a, we had a restaurant in the community. Mm -hmm. So the connection of ministry as a pastor and also so having a, a restaurant really became this really powerful like connection mm -hmm. um you know as as uh, i went i was on a tv show with uh, the rapper t-pain and he called me a bean evangelist <laughs> 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 so i was the bean evangelist How and funny. uh you know so we started using a restaurant you know in connection with our church you know we did cooking classes like an extension of the church um, we would also do uh, like a 60 day challenges, 30 day challenges. And at the end of these challenges, we would invite the community to go deeper and say, listen, you know, there was a man in the Bible named Daniel, you know, who went on a, you know, a 10 day fast, you know, going plant based and God opened his mind to prophecy, you know, and so really started seeing how to like combine ministry uh, with food. Um, and how, you know, obviously as you eat better, the Holy Spirit can speak to our hearts and God gives us understanding and, mm -hmm. and knowledge and wisdom, you know, and even also prophetic understanding. And so that became that. And so as a result of that, I actually uh, got a call um, from Northern California to start a vegan restaurant in Oakland, uh, Northern California Conference of Seven Adventists. Um, and so they actually came and said, hey, I love what you're doing in Arkansas. It would be great that we can start a restaurant in Oakland. But the thing is that I, I don't, the restaurant that we currently have, I don't own it. The actual restaurant is actually owned by the church. Got it. Um, and so I literally got a calling, you know, from the conference and said, hey, actually, it was interesting. Um, it was a part of the Bridges Initiative. I think mm. you guys did Operation Blueprint. Right. Yeah. So that was mm -hmm. like 2014. Um, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Got so it. you had the Operation Blueprint in Central California. Um, and, and what the focus for Northern actually became the vegan restaurant launch mm. in Oakland. And that was the project for the Bridges Initiative. You know, again, Central California, Oakland, California, I mean, and Northern California are connected through Bridges. Yeah. Um, so that was that big initiative back then. Yeah. So, so tell us why, that was, tell yeah, us go why ahead. they thought putting the vegetarian restaurant would do so well, or why was it needed in Oakland or, and why it would do, why they thought it would do well there? 
Yeah, so Oakland is a it's a it's a foodie city. You know, you have a lot of people that work. Uh, ba- you know, they pretty much are. Um, what do you call it? It's like a bedroom community for San Francisco. Yeah. Um, so there's a lot of people that actually eat out or San Jose. Um, that you know, eating out is like a part of the culture. It's a lot of young, yeah. a lot of young millennials, especially because they can't afford like to live in, in San mm-hmm. Francisco. Um, you know, so there's a lot of foodies in Oakland. Um, also, uh, we wanted to this this do church differently, right. and the idea was that can we start a ministry that would help to create a church? That was kind of the concept. Mm. Um, you know, obviously like today, for example, I mean, our churches are closed, right. um, you know, but guess what? The restaurant's still open, oh, right. um, Amen. you know? And so, and again, I always go back to our, our faith and, and Ellen White, she spoke about starting restaurants, believe it or not. Um, and she spoke about starting restaurants in San Francisco, and in Oakland, which is so powerful. Wow. Um, and she and said that it's that a work. Like and she said. Direct leading. Go ahead. She said you took that as direct leading. You were like, okay, I'll, I'll put the. Oh, man. Yeah. I was like, I, when I came and sold this to the church, I was like, we about to live the page. I said, a hundred <laughs> years ago, our prophet said that we're going to have restaurants in Oakland and in San Francisco. I said, we have a record that there was a restaurant in San Francisco but there was no restaurant in Oakland that we know of. Mm. I said, today, this is like Jesus said, today, this is going to be fulfilled in your eyes. Mm. Isaiah 61. You are are a fulfillment of prophecy, man. Hey, we're living the page, man. You know, I tell you, man, we go ahead. I was just going to say, what if, what if the members of the church would seek to live the page? Mm, come on mm. you know where we have one of you we could have thousands of you you see what i'm saying and and it might not yes. be in the food industry it might be something totally yes. different but absolutely what, what i what i find is that you know we will often sit and debate about theological points and how we should be witnessing but we we don't actually get up and do something Yes. And so we just talk about concepts and how this should be done, how that should be done. Just or we something. shouldn't do this or we shouldn't do that. Okay, well, what are we going to do? Oh, well, and, mm-hmm. and we end up doing nothing. And we end up doing nothing. And yes. so this has been, you know, something that's become, I think, front and center for us as a, as a church. What are we doing to make changes in the world? What are we doing to affect <clears throat> to have an effect in our communities mm. because just holding an evangelistic series or just in, inviting people to come to our church mm-hmm. is not it's, cutting it. No. Yes. Right. It, yes. We're, we have to get involved with our communities. And as I, you know, I've said over the past couple of Sabbaths, a uh, couple of months, if you have a passion go out there and find a way to make that passion a reality. Yes. Because this is a passion for you. This is a passion That's for you. That's why you would stay up all night making recipes and making hey. your mom as your tester. Absolutely. I mean, to your point, I mean, what, what you know, for me, it, it became even deeper because I was adopted at birth. I didn't say that, but I was adopted at birth. Mm. And I was adopted into a family, a black family that had the last name Chu, right? Mm. Wow. <laughs> wow. Wow. You know, I mean, C-H-E-W, right? <laughs> and, um, Not by coincidence. You know, yeah. so that be, you know, I know by coincidence, right? And so as I began to like really looking deeper in this, you know, what I'm doing, I realized that, like you said, Ivor, like God has called all of us, you know, God created us, you know, for his glory, as the Bible <laughs> says. Um, and so, you know, I already saw that, you know, my last name, Chu, you know, and then, you know, Chef Chew, like, oh, man, like something to chew on and all that, you know, became more clear for me that this was a calling. Um, and, and I thank God that, you know, even through the, the, the turmoil of, of literally going through an adoption, it became my biggest blessing mm-hmm. um, because it helped me Amen. to, you know, I'm, I'm number one, have an amazing mom Amen. and dad. And um, but get exposed to, you know, our faith, you know, which got me to actually see my purpose, which is what I'm doing right now. Um, so, so, so let's talk about ministry for a second. Uh, a lot of Adventists are talking about, you know, uh, we need to address 
uh, the issue of, uh, you know, ch child abuse and uh, di different, things, different things of this nature. Mm -hmm. um, that, is that a ministry to actually I'm, adopt a child? Uh, yeah. You understand what I'm saying? <clears throat> I mean, look I mean, at your hey, testimony. I, I put it like this. Um, I would not be here today. Mm. I mean, you know, the alternative for me is that if I wasn't adopted, who knows where I would have been, right? Mm. Um, my wife was actually in foster care um, when she was like 13, 14 and went to an Adventist home that was a foster family. Wow. And wow. that's how she got introduced into Adventism. So both of us, you know, I'm an adoptee. She was a foster child. Wow. Um, and, and that's how we got both got exposed to God, number one, um, and then to this beautiful end time message that God has given us. So is it a ministry? We're, my wife and I are living proof of the ministry. Yeah. Um, so, yes, 100 percent. Yeah, hundred percent. We we yeah. have, we have to stop sermonizing, and I mean, it's just I, I think it's way beyond time that as a church, the members of this worldwide church realize, hey, God has called you specifically into this church for a specific purpose, mm -hmm. and it is not to be able to sit in church and say, I am no. in church, right? Yes. Yeah. Right. That is not the purpose of your calling. Yes. Be, go to church. That obviously. But the purpose of your calling is to be a light to other people. Right. And uh, just imagine if after your, your yes. first your 2008, um, your, your 2008 experience or your first restaurant. Was that 2008? 2008 yes yeah. 2008 if you had gotten discouraged and like well you know what i tried it and uh it didn't work so that's that mm -hmm. yes i mean to your point man i think to your point i mean if there's ever a time like you said we have to redefine what ministry looks like um i mean it's 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 it's, it's more than evident in this COVID crisis um yes i mean we need social enterprises that are, are, are gospel centered, you know what I mean? Not that, and, and here, and let me explain what like, like in our restaurant in Oakland, like what that looks like on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, like we're not overtly like, yo, you know, you know, we're seven at Venice. Like that's not the first thing you're gonna ever hear from us. Mm -hmm. What we, but I realized in my first restaurant, cause my first restaurant, I didn't understand this. My first restaurant, when you came into the restaurant, I'm giving you a great controversy as soon as you walk in the door, right? <laughs> so, with the menu, you with, know. The menu. with the menu. Like, hey. Here's your great controversy and your menu. What would you like? The, the great controversy menu. <laughs> hey, it was the menu as soon as you walk in, right? So my, it was funny because I'm in my hometown. My mom lived in the hometown as well. So she was like, she was like, look, if you don't give them people good food and give them good customer service, they ain't gonna want to read your book in the first place. So yeah, she's like, man, right. first feed them some good food and give some good customer service. And then maybe you might can go talk talking about God, you know. So, mm -hmm. you know, my first approach was like, you know, we're a Seven Adventist restaurant. They gotta learn the message. They gotta learn the truth. And so I'm gonna give them the great controversy and all of that. Have Bible studies and and be debating with people and all this type of stuff. And 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 the Holy Spirit, man, as I kind of kept learning in this in this in, as we have a social enterprise in our community, my number one goal is to meet their need. You know, Christ's method alone will bring true success in reaching the people. He mingled with men as one who desired their good. He shows sympathy. He uh, he he uh, he won their confidence, and then he bade them follow me. Right, so he mingled, and so he met their needs. Mm -hmm. So the need is like, I'm hungry. I am hungry, bro. Mm -hmm. I, I need. I want some good vegan food. Like mm -hmm. I just got off a long day at work. Or I'm on my lunch break. I need this food in like ten minutes. Mm -hmm. So can you give me some great vegan food, and hopefully some great customer service, which is something I'm really. Um, I think friends first, customers second. Um, everybody that comes to the restaurant, we say welcome family so what i learned is that the key is, is is great food great customer service people become customers for life mm -hmm. they come sometimes one day two day three days a week because they love your not only your food mm -hmm. but they also love your energy and your and, and the god that's in you that they don't even realize so if you look at like our reviews let's if you go on like look up the veg hub go on yelp or google uh, Facebook, most of our, you always see great food, but you always say, man, these people are so loving, uh, the, the customer service. Uh, one of my team members, Sarah, she's I our, like our, these our, people are so yeah. loving. Wow. yeah, yeah. And that's, that's the number one. So the point is, is that that's the ministry. People just come to talk to us. I mean, we have people that have come 
and they just come just and hang out, just sit in the, sit in the restaurant when we, when, we had, when we were open, just to see us. And they'd be like, man, I'm just coming here to chill. And they became like, like, like furniture, yeah. <laughs> I mean, no exaggeration. Um, one of our customers' success story, um, he literally was one of our customers, got so inspired, he wanted to start a food truck. He ended up starting a vegan restaurant in Oakland and now he's one of the like leading vegan restaurants in the in, in Oakland. Um, and him and I are like closest of friends. We do a lot of work together and, and a lot of the work in, so in, the, in the food inspired space. By your, he was inspired by the food Yes. Cup. Wow. That's powerful. And so it was funny. It was like he was actually, uh, he, he comes from the streets in San Francisco. And um, he was like, look, man, I, I was selling him my, my meat products. I sell the better two proteins to his restaurant. But when he first started getting it, he came and got like, 10 pounds this is mm -hmm. like on a monday mm -hmm. he came back on again on a wednesday was like man i need some more he called me like at night it was like man, i need like another 10 15 pounds i was like i got you man don't worry about it he called me again on thursday night it was like same week i need i said man, i'm selling out of this stuff i need another 10 to 15 pounds of your product man i was like hey no problem when he picked it up the last time he was like man this feel like i'm moving you know some other stuff some other stuff i used to move back in the day <laughs> wow that's funny wow. <laughs> wow. he was like he was like now nah. he said i used to move the other stuff yeah now i'm moving vegan meats man wow you know i was like praise wow, god man good. wow and uh good. you know so we pray together man him and i got the closest relationship so the point is is that when you treat people like family you give them something that they need the food is great right and, and that could be for any ministry like a time that you do mental health, mm -hmm. I'm sure that opens up so many, so much spiritual conversations. You know, it could be anything that you do can be a, a gateway to the gospel. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I, on your Facebook, I saw you have some some well known people that have frequent your uh, uh, restaurant as well. Um, I'm, is it Sean Livingston from the Warriors? I saw. Yeah, Sean Livingston. Yeah. So he, he did he come often or was he just there that one time? Is he is he vegan? No, nah, no. Nah, I, I, I don't know if Sean is vegan or not, but he definitely eats a lot of vegan food. Okay. But he, Sean, he came at least, I want to say, 10 times. I mean, I've wow. seen him there a couple times myself. Wow. Um, he's retired. Yeah. Now, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. 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 He lives like five minutes in the restaurant. Wow. Wow. So it was a. Uh, it was a, a popular spot like people people knew or know that it's there absolutely if we do i mean we're, we're a name stay in oakland um you know people definitely respect the work that we do mm -hmm. and since we now have our products you know we sell our better true proteins and whole foods um we do a lot of education work um was on a few tv shows with like t-pain and stuff like that talking about healthy food mm -hmm. um you know god has really opened up a lot of doors to really share our message and people know who we are for sure so tell yeah. us just a little bit about the journey about getting into into Whole Foods, and then I want you to tell us about the classes you do when you're not when the yeah. restaurant's not open, but your journey to and, and the connections you've made, um, you know, with the different companies. Right. Um, Absolutely. Yeah. So one of the I will say, so you know, we obviously been in this, you know, the Black Lives Matter. This is whole reality. You know, one thing I would say, and it's a ministry in a, in, a, in, a, in a very interesting, you know, dynamic that. In the food space, you know, in that industry, there's not a lot of uh, African American uh, food manufacturers, mm -hmm. um, and so that became a really big asset, believe it or not, um, you know, in the food space. And so, a lot of a lot of the companies, like a Whole Foods, for example, we're in 40, 46, 47 Whole Foods. Um, wow. They're looking for minority manufacturers because if you, I went to a meeting at Whole Foods and it was like probably out of like a thousand, two thousand people that were actually pr producers of food. It might've was, it might've been 10 of us in the room. Mm. If that makes wow. sense. Wow. Um, and so these companies, not only are they looking for local products, you know, stuff that's locally made healthy, so forth. They're also looking for companies that look like me. Um, and, and this, the timing with the plant-based world. Um, I met, I was at a, a pitch competition and, um, I had the, the buyer at Whole Foods was at, the, at this event. And uh, I was like, yo, I got my little 30 second elevated pitch. It's like, yo, my name is Chef Chew. And as I always say, going to give you something to chew on. I'm like, man, I got this chicken called Better Chew that looks like chicken, tastes like chicken, but guess what? It ain't chicken. Crispy on the outside, white in the middle. Oh, it's delicious. I was like, man, give me one shot. I said, if you give me a shot, you won't be disappointed. He said, come to my office next week and let's see what we can do. So literally sent me the email. 
we went to Whole Foods and I had my product. I had already done all the hard work and getting the packaging and just a lot of the stuff behind the scenes from the business side. I had all that stuff in place, pitched the product. He was like, we want to bring this into Whole Foods. Wow. And it literally took me about a year and a half to get from that time of having that conversation to get on the shelf. Mm. But again, this people don't realize like business takes time like to get a product on the shelf in the store. Um, I mean, it's a lot behind that. I mean, so we have a, a full okay. manufacturing facility in Vallejo, California, um, another facility in Oakland that we're about to launch. Um, so there's a lot behind this and a lot of money it takes. Um, and that's a whole other conversation. But God is blessed. We were able to get funding. We won pitch competitions. I mean, national competitions where we pitched our business and I won first place in the, like two of them from that we were able to get exposed to some of the leading companies. So when you win a pitch competition, like a Shark Tank concept, um, you have like the judges and like you get mentors. And some of these mentors are like people that run some of the brands that we love. Um, so like Miyoko's Creamery, uh, Follow Your Heart. I'm, I just got uh, recently, I'm on a board of the Plant-Based Food Association. And the board is actually the founders and CEOs of uh, Miyoko's Creamery, uh, Tofurky, the CEO of Tofurky, um, Follow Your Heart, the CEO of Follow Your Heart. Um, and uh, it's another company called Good Karma. Uh, mm. You know, so a lot of the plant-based companies in the space, um, we've been able to like meet the CEOs, and I've had conversations, and um, they all know who I am. I mean, which is a, a humbly said, so it's God moving. Yeah. Um, and God they've been so supportive. Working. And um, you know, and, and like right now, the plant-based industry is is like one of the fastest-growing spaces in food. So like you think about Beyond Meat and Impossible, mm -hmm. like they they have a billion, like a four billion, ten billion dollar valuation of their company. So you know, there's a lot of investment coming into this space. So that being said, you know, I've I've gotten a lot of investors, you know, come at our company as like, hey, we want to invest, and so that's been a, a lot of, of exposure as well. Um, you know, so. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, but I, last thing I say on this is that as a company, we came to a place to realize that we're not just doing this for profit. Our mission as a company is to democratize healthy food mm -hmm. uh, in communities that need it the most. And so yeah. when you think about the food space, there's a lot of communities, black and brown communities, due to systematic racism, that also don't have access to stores like Whole Foods. And there's a lot of liquor stores and a lot of foods, you know, that's just not the healthiest in these communities. Um, so our, our focus as a company is to find ways to make our plant-based products affordable and to penetrate our products into urban communities, even rural communities that need these products. And so that's really what we're focusing on as our big fight. Um, and I believe that if Christ was here, I told you, Ivor, yesterday, I said, if Christ was here, you know, Christ, not only was he a carpenter, but Christ was a chef, man. You know, he he, he had the five loaves and two fishes cafe, the miracle <laughs> juice bar, you know, in the wilderness, he had the, the manna cafeteria. The angels was the bakers from heaven, man. They was just dropping, dropping bread from the sky. Come on now. You know, so, oh, I love you know, it. I love that's, that's, that's the work that I believe that God can use to, I call it a missionary chef, you know, so I'm calling my, my plea that today is like where are the missionary chefs? Mm. Yeah, where there like like Larry said, where there's one, there should be one thousand. Yeah, mm -hmm. you know we need restaurants in every major city of America. Yeah, um, and Seven. and and one that is not only providing healthy food, but that is fueled by the Holy Spirit, and, and God has a place and a purpose for for people that have that dream or, or whatever your social enterprise or nonprofit that it might be that can be used to meet a need that can lead somebody to Jesus. Yeah. Amen. Amen. And, and just a, a shameless plug, uh, Chef uh, is going to be working, we're working together on a One Race, Many Colors project that will revolve around the health message. Amen. So uh, I know that some of you have been responding and asking, hey, uh, what is this initiative you guys are talking about in the health um, arena? Um, we, are, we are working on that right now and we're going to send out an email to everyone that contacted us and said, hey, I want to be a part of it. I'm a health and temperance leader in my church or what have you. Um, so uh, just know that that's happening. Yes. But, um, more information coming soon. More information coming soon. But this is, this is what ministry is. I like how you it's said exciting. It's you make friends. It's on the front lines. Yes. yes. I love it. All those things. Sorry. You make <laughs> friends. No, no, no. I'm no, saying no. you make friends. Yes. Right? You yep. make friends and... And then you bid them follow Christ. That's the nicest yes. thing somebody can say about you is 
those people are so loving. I mean, yes. that you, yes. you, uh, you, you reach their heart. Oh yeah, our goal should be that every group of people on this planet, when they come across the Adventist church, should be saying, those people are so loving. Yes. Yeah. Atheists yeah. should be yes. saying, those people are so loving. Mm -hmm. Yes, mm -hmm. yes. Are they? And, 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 yeah, yeah. Don't oh know. man, don't get don't get it started. Yeah, man. let's not get started. <laughs> let's not get started. But I think I feel like you said we, we got to get from the the theory of the gospel to the the practicality of the gospel. Right. And I and I've loved your messages, Ivor, and w what you shared this and and really kind of getting out of this, you know, this head this head gospel to a more of a hand and head gospel. Mm -hmm. But you know, but we're really meeting needs, man. Um, being the feet of Jesus, you know, in the hands of Christ. I want two things. I, before I ask my more serious question, I want to know, because your the meat that you have in Whole Foods or the veggie meat you have in Whole Foods, it's not gluten-free, right? It actually is gluten-free. Gluten um, two products are. Okay. Uh, we can't, we, we make it in a facility with, with, with our fried chicken product has gluten in it. But our shredded chicken and shredded steak is actually gluten free. But we, we, we can't legally put it on the package because we have a facility that because uses gluten. In, okay, um, I got you. Yeah, but 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 technically it's it's it's, it's actually hundred percent gluten free. Yeah. I love that. And the and the name of the uh, the line of the foods in uh, Whole Foods. Yeah, if you can see my shirt. Oh, better chew. Better chew. Yeah. Better chew. Okay. Yeah, better chew. Okay. Yeah, better texture, better taste. Better too. <laughs> right. I love it. I want you to just talk about briefly, like, because I asked you if you're open now, and you said you're open Monday through Thursday during this pandemic time, right? Yeah. And, oh man. And those other days, you have classes going on, or tell me what tell me what you're doing, or how you use the restaurant yeah, this, when you're not open. In a, in a miracle story, in the in the COVID, um, we're open four days a week, Monday through Thursday. It's the craziest hours ever. So people think we're crazy, but they kind of learn that. We have we're a nonprofit restaurant, which can be how we kind of explain it to our community. Right. Um, in June, open four days a week. Now watch this: open four days a week in the midst of the COVID nineteen. We had a, almost a ten thousand dollar profit in 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 June. Hmm. Wow! I, I mean, it was it was it was almost like I mean the Holy Spirit. You cover the latter rain. We had the latter rain <laughs> fall down in the restaurant, man. <laughs> wow! I love it. I love it. I mean, we're not even open on weekends, Friday, Saturday, or Sunday. I mean, it was, I mean, amazing. Time. Wow. Um, so God this <laughs> has been moving. Um, what we do, uh, Atante, is mm -hmm. that we, 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 we have, no, no, nobody can come inside the restaurant. Everything's right. like walk up, you walk to the restaurant, order. And then right now, there's, a, there's this whole new phenomenon of online ordering. So you can do Grubhub or your DoorDash. Um, any of those Uber Eats. Mm -hmm. um, so we do a lot of food that we sell through those through those devices. And yeah. they just, all day long, they just ring and ring and ring and people make orders. Um, so that's been a very big part of our business. Um, and God has been, I mean, just supporting, providing. Um, the restaurant is finally at a place where it's self-sustainable, mm -hmm. uh, which is really challenging. Most yeah. of the businesses in our church that's been done by our church has not been sustainable. Right. We finally got into a place where the restaurant is actually self-sustainable. Um, and so to the other side of our model is that the, the goal was always to be self-sustainable. We're supposed to suffer financially. And the goal is that we, we've been doing classes in the community, cooking classes, education. So, you know, when we were open, we would do cooking classes on a monthly, bi-monthly, two, two times a month, bi-weekly basis. Um, cooking classes for kids, cooking classes for adults. Uh, one of our, our lead team members, uh, Sarah, uh, we had Auntie Sarah's Kitchen. Uh, where she would do classes for kids. I love um, her. So we she did so yeah, classes for kids. Uh, we did classes for adults. Um, so that was a really big part of our model. Um, and then we do a lot of work, again, in the, like, like Albert was asking on, you know, this advocacy uh, when it comes to, like, food deserts um, and, and social justice issues and food justice issues. So that's a big part of our work as well and being a voice. We also, uh, during COVID, we uh, had a program called Food for the Town, um, where we actually gave out a lot of free boxes of produce and free boxes of foods. Um, so that was something that we've done a lot of uh, as well in, the, in recent months. Mm. Um, but lastly, I will say our, our, our goal for the restaurant was this. Uh, the church, the, the restaurant would be a gateway to one day in, in an organic way, not forcing it, but an organic way lead to a church plant. Mm. Um, so that was really the idea, um, is to utilize the restaurant to make friendships. Amen. 
and then utilize that to start having Friday night gatherings, um, building community. Um, you know, it's kind of changed, obviously, because the COVID kind of hit us, so we can't yeah. have gatherings of that nature. Mm -hmm. um, at the same time, we're still staying strong. Um, but the mission, the ultimate mission that we have for the restaurant model, and this is what we're hoping to duplicate across the country, um, is to utilize these restaurants as a way to build relationships, build community, and this will become a church planning uh, a model, you know, yeah. where you can use restaurants to, to be a church plant. Yep. And if it can become financially sustainable, you know, a conference, for example, yeah. um, can then the money that they would expend on evangelism, Mercy. you know, the restaurants making all the friends meeting the needs Mercy. and then the money could be used to really support the, the ministry side of it, if that makes sense. Yes, I absolutely yeah. love this. I love yeah. it. Yeah. You know, I remember when you came out here, when you first came out here and was starting, and just to see the journey on how God has been able to lead mm -hmm. you is amazing. And I have to well, say, praise to, God. Yeah, I have to say to those who are are watching that this is what we're this is what we're talking about. Yep. Like this is ministry. Like you're connecting with the people, you're helping them to have you know get healthy food and have a better you know lifestyle and those type of things, and you're making yeah. friends. This is ministry. This we, is what Jesus yeah. did. We yeah. continue to say do something yes like i get emails and what yes. you're passionate about like it yeah you you can do something well if you're passionate about yeah. it this is why uh, yes. step two is doing you're doing so well because of god and because you're passionate and you believe yeah 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 um yeah. i get uh i get emails all the time pastor well what about this issue what about that issue and i'm like is this what you're passionate about yes do something yes do something yes do yes and not something. expecting something. the pastors and the leaders of the church to to do it all but everybody doing something yes yeah yes, what's your yes. issue address it mm -hmm. right if yes. you think people out there that are suffering from xyz do something do something yeah. do something that's really the whole point of this guys it's we have to become active if we're not mingling with the with with the world and trying to witness to them we're just cut, cut off in our or shut in off bubbles. in our yes, little yeah. secluded circles. Exactly. Wow. Yes. We are yeah. all out of time. I, this conversation could go longer. This was like, this was so much fun. We're going to have you back. We're going to have you back. Hey, We're going to talk about more things because it's exciting. People have been very excited. All the comments. Um, people have just been excited. They want to know the name again. Um, so go ahead. Give them the name of your restaurant and your product that's in Whole Foods. Absolutely, yeah. So we're all um, our, our restaurant's called the Veg Hub. So the the Veg Hub, and, and um, we're in we're in Oakland, California. Just look us up. Uh, you definitely can find us. We're, on, we're definitely we're very active on Instagram. Check us out on Instagram. Um, our product is called Better Chew. Um, so again, Better Chew. You can kind of see the picture of the product, Better Chew. Mm -hmm. And um, you know we're, we're we're in Whole Foods in all of Northern California. Um, we're in the ABCs and Loma Linda, all up the coast, any any on the West Coast, any ABC on the West Coast, we're in all of those stores. And then lastly, uh, we're coming to select cities um, where we actually have a direct-to-consumer box where you can literally buy our product directly from us. Mm -hmm. We're going to be in L.A. next month. Um, we're looking at an Oakwood, or Huntsville, Alabama. We're going to be, our product's going to be there hopefully in the next month or so. Oh, that's um, amazing. Yeah, that's so we're actually partnering. So I will say this as a plug. Anybody that wants to bring our product to their cities, uh, we have a, a model that we can ship product um, and, and we can partner with different people. Um, so that's something that we can talk about as well. Maybe through your, through your program, uh, Ivor One Race Many Colors, mm -hmm. um, we can talk about that. Um, but like I said, we're, we're, we're here to serve, here to inspire. Um, and this is if there's ever a time for the health message, um, the time is right now. Yeah. Um, God is, needs us to be like Joseph um, during this time to provide solutions for the people. Yep. Amen. 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 Well, thank you so much for for being um, on our Sabbath School program. Uh, like I said, we're definitely going to have you back. This was exciting. People are just loving it. There's just tons of hearts and likes going up on the on the feed. So you've definitely inspired and blessed so many, including Amen. us today. So praise God. Well, praise the Lord. Um, hey, I'm happy. Thank you so much. Yes. Amen. Uh, we want to thank everyone for joining our Sabbath school. We're going to be starting our church service in about 10 to 15 minutes. Um, so we'll want you to come back then. If you have any special prayer requests, please just put it in the comment section because we'll be praying over your request at the beginning of the divine worship. And I'm just hoping we're just praying that you were so inspired by today that you will say, hey, I'm passionate about this. 
I want to do something with this certain topic and I want to start a ministry or just start reaching people um, so that they can say, you are a loving person because mm -hmm. like, you're touching them exactly um, where, where th their need is. And so we hope you're inspired by that. We want to just end our Sabbath school with a closing prayer. Yeah. And I want to remind you, the sermon coming up, don't miss it. Tell your people, start logging on. Don't miss it. You're not going to want to miss this. I You're promise not you. Miss it. <laughs> I promise you. I promise you. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, bless us uh, as um, we look for ways, Lord, to be more active in, in this world, a world that is perishing, Lord. We thank you for the testimony of GW, Lord, and uh, how he is making change. Um, through his ministry we ask that you would bless him continue to bless his ministry lord and uh, may it reap a fruitful harvest i pray for those who are watching who um, are who have been inspired today to do something to take action um, whatever that thing is lord i pray that you would bless it whatever field it is in that you would bless it and that you would remind them that you have called them into this church to be active, to take action. So Lord, we thank you for hearing. We thank you for blessing us during the Sabbath school. Please be with us in the, in the divine service coming up. We pray it in Jesus' holy name. Amen. Amen. Amen.